वेलकम टू द चैप्टर रियल नंबर्स दिस स्लाइड प्रेजेंट्स द ओवरव्यू ऑफ द चैप्टर नाउ लेट अस लर्न अबाउट रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ अ रेशनल नंबर ऑन अ नंबर लाइन फॉर एग्जांपल लेट अस कंसीडर द नंबर 10 बाय 2 here p is equal to 10 and q is equal to 2 where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0 here the number 10 by 2 can also be represented as 5 by 1 similarly let us consider one more example that is 16 by 24 further simplification is as shown on the screen So all these are equivalent rational numbers. Thus, from examples one and two, we conclude that the rational numbers do not have a unique representation in the form p by q. And also, we observe that the rational number of the form p by q, assuming q not equal to zero, and that p and q doesn't have common factors other than universal factor one. So on a number line among all the infinitely many fractions equivalent to the given number we use simplest form to represent all of them In the given fraction 2 is the numerator and 3 is the denominator from image 1 let's see the pictorial representation of 2 by 3 It means that from 3 equal parts two parts are taken out as shown in the below image representation of 2 by 3 on a number line is as shown in image 2 let us represent 2 by 3 on a number line initially draw a line take a point o on it and mark it as 0 from the right side of point o set off equal distances to a that is oa Now divide OA into three equal parts as denominator is three. Let OP be the segment consisting two parts out of three. Thus, the point P represents the rational number two by three. And similarly, for representation of rational number minus two by three, set off equal distance to the left side of O, that is OB. and then divide ob into three parts the segment op dash consists two parts out of three thus the point p dash represents the rational number minus 2 by 3 let us do a simple activity on rational numbers choose the appropriate answer whether it is right or wrong One, is every integer a rational number? Yes, every integer is a rational number since they can be represented in the form p by q. For example, let us consider minus four, which can also be rewritten as minus four equal to minus sixteen by four, which is a rational number. Two, is zero a rational number? Yes. Zero is also a rational number as it can be expressed as zero by one, zero by two, and so on. Say zero by infinity is equal to zero, where infinity not equal to zero. Three. Does rational numbers have unique representation? No. The rational numbers do not have a unique representation in the form of p by q. For example. Sixteen by four can be written as shown. Let us discuss how to find the rational numbers between any two numbers using mean method. Mean method is categorized into two types: 
namely method 1 and method 2. Click each method tab to know more. Method 1. If P and Q are two rational numbers, then its mean is P plus Q by 2. Let us consider the two numbers 2 and 3. Here P is equal to 2 and Q is equal to 3. Then the mean of these two numbers is 5 by 2, which lies in between 2 and 3. If further the process is continued, we obtain many more rational numbers in between 2 and 5 by 2 as shown below. Where 2 is less than 9 by 4, less than 5 by 2, less than 3. Method 2. Let us consider the same numbers used in method 1. Here, to find four rational numbers between 2 and 3, we write 2 and 3 taking denominator as 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. That is, 2 equal to 10 by 5 and 3 equal to 15 by 5, which is further expressed as shown on screen. Note. Thus, we conclude that there exists infinitely many number of rational numbers in between any two given rational numbers. Let us solve some example problems on converting rational numbers to decimal form. Express 8 by 3 in the decimal form by long division. Solution by dividing 8 with 3, we get as follows. Therefore, 8 by 3 is equal to 2.6 bar, which is a non-terminating recurring decimal. Express 17 by 8 in the decimal form by long division. Solution By dividing 17 with 8, we get as follows. Therefore, 17 by 8 is equal to 2.125, which is a terminating decimal. Express 0.84 bar as a rational number, P by Q form. Solution Let X is equal to 0.84 bar, which is represented as equation 1. Multiplying equation 1, with 100 on both sides, we get as equation 2. Subtracting 1 from 2, we obtain as follows. Let us solve a few exercise problems. Click the tab to view solution.
Let us have a look on irrational numbers. Let us consider the equation x square equal to 9. Solving this equation, we obtain x values as minus 3 and plus 3. Now, we know the representation of the numbers minus 3 and plus 3 on a number line which is as shown. Similarly, let us take the equation 2x equal to 5. Here we obtain x value as plus 5 by 2 and the representation of it is as shown. Finally, let us consider the equation x square equal to 3. Taking square root on both sides, we get as shown on screen. Thus, x value is obtained as root 3. Such type of numbers can't represent on a number line directly for this we need to know the value of root 3. So, let us find root 3 value by long division method. Let us solve an example of irrational numbers. Find the value of root 3 by long division method. Step 1. Place decimal point after 3. Step 2. After decimal point, Write zeros and pave them putting bar over them. Step 3. Find the largest square smaller than 3 that is 1. Subtract 1 from 3 which leaves 2 and write 1 as the first digit of the quotient. Step 4. Take the reminder 2 and bring the first pair of zeros to down and then add a decimal point to the answer. Then follow the same steps to find the next digits. Step 5. Now take the first digit of quotient 1, but make it double, that is 2, and make that number 10 times. Then take a number of your wish, say 7, and it must be less than 200. As in the example, product of 27 and 7 is 189, which is less than 200. Step 6. Subtract 189 from 200 which leaves 11 and bring the pair of zeros to down. So, here the value of root 3 is 1.732 and so on. Let us do an activity on rational and irrational numbers. Drag and drop the appropriate number into their respective boxes. The numbers which can be written as perfect squares is known as rational numbers or a number which can be written in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q is not equal to zero is called a rational number. The numbers which cannot be expressed in terms of perfect squares are known as irrational numbers or a number which cannot be written in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0 is called an irrational number. Knowledge Check Attempt the following questions to check your understanding.
Now, let us learn how to represent irrational numbers on a number line. Before going to learn the representation of irrational numbers on a number line, we need to know about Pythagoras theorem. The Pythagoras theorem states that in a right angle triangle ABC, the line opposite to the right angle is hypotenuse and it says that hypotenuse square is equal to the sum of the squares of other two sides that is as shown on screen. Now, let us go back how to represent the numbers with roots on a number line. Here, let us represent root 3 on a number line. Initially, draw a number line, mark point 0 on it. Either sides of 0, mark the points minus 2, minus 1, 1, 2 with equal set of distances as shown. Now, with the same distance from 0 to 1, draw another line with right angle at 1 and then join these points as shown. Let us mark the points of right angle triangle as OAB. Now, to find the distance between OA, we use Pythagoras theorem. From Pythagoras theorem OA is equal to square root of OB square plus BA square which is equal to square root of 1 square plus 1 square that is root 2. So, the distance between OA is root 2. Now, draw the perpendicular line to OA of unit length and mark it as D. Now, join OD. Then take OD as radius that is length of root 3 and construct a circle such that it meets the number line and mark the intersecting point C. So, the OC is also radius of the circle which is the representation of root 3. Now, let us solve some example problems on irrational numbers. Find two irrational numbers between point 0.12 and point 0.13. Solution Let the given numbers be A equal to point 0.12 and B equal to point 0.13. We observe that the given two numbers are irrational numbers and A less than B. Since by comparing both the numbers after the decimal point, the first digit is same in both the cases and the second digit of 2 is lesser than 3. Now, let us write some numbers such that greater than A and lesser than B. They are 0.121. Point one two two, point one two three. Now, add some non-terminating recurring decimal to these numbers as shown on screen. Let us assume these numbers as C, D, E. Thus, we conclude that the numbers C, D, E are irrational. Therefore, A less than C, less than D, less than E less than B. Find two irrational numbers between 3 by 2 and 7 by 2. Solution Let the given numbers be A equal to 3 by 2 and B equal to 7 by 2. We observe that both the numbers are rational since they are in the form of P by Q where Q0 equal to 0. Initially here, we need to find the decimal expansions of the given two numbers. The decimal expansion of 3 by 2 is 1.5. And similarly, the decimal expansion of 7 by 2 is 3.5. Now, represent the two decimal numbers on a number line. The irrational numbers between these two numbers should lie in between 1.5 and 3.5. So, let us consider some numbers like 2, 3. By adding some non-terminating, non-recurring decimal to these numbers, we get two irrational numbers.
find an irrational number between 4 and 6. Solution If A and B are two positive rational numbers, such that AB is not a perfect square of a rational number, then root AB is an irrational number lying between A and B. Therefore, an irrational number between 4 and 6 is root of 4 into 6. By solving further, we obtain it as 2 root 6. Let us solve a few exercise problems. Click the tab to view solution. Representation of real numbers on the number line through successive magnification. Visualize 3.765 on a number line using successive magnification. We know that 3.765 lies between the interval 3 and 4. To have a rough idea for locating it on a number line, make 10 equal parts and mark them as 3, 3.1, 3.2 and so on up to 4 as shown. Now look the portion in between 3.7 and 3.8 using magnifying glass and realize that 3.765 lies between 3.7 and 3.8 as shown in figure 1. So, let us now divide this portion into 10 equal parts and represent them as 3.71 3.72, so on 3.8 as shown in figure 2. As before, now we can visualize through the magnifying glass that 3.765 lies in between 3.76 and 3.77. So, let us focus on this portion of number line as shown in figure 3 and imagine to divide it again into 10 equal parts. Thus magnify it to see it better as in figure 3. This is how the terminating decimal expansion on a number line is represented. Now, let us represent non-terminating recurring decimal on a number line. Visualize 4.26 bar on a number line using successive magnification. Here, the repeating decimal 4.26 lies between the interval 4 and 5. To have a rough idea for locating it on a number line, make 10 equal parts and mark them as 4.1, 4.2, so on up to 5 as shown in figure 1. Now, look the portion in between 4.2 and 4.3 using magnifying glass and realize that 4.26 lies between them as shown in figure 2. So, let us now divide this portion into 10 equal parts and represent them as 4.26, 4.261, so on up to 4.27 7 as shown in figure 3. As before, now we can visualize through the magnifying glass that 4.2626 lies in between 4.262 and 4.263. We can proceed endlessly in this manner and simultaneously imagine the decrease in the length of the interval in which 4.26 bar is located. Operations on real numbers. In the previous class, we learned about properties of addition and multiplication. And we also know how to add, subtract and multiply the given rational numbers. Now, let us discuss how irrational numbers are also closed to fundamental operations. Let us solve some examples. Here, in the first example, the addition of root 6 and minus root 6 results 0, 
which is a rational number. In the second example, the difference or subtraction of root 7 and root 7 results 0, which is a rational number. In the third example, the product of root 4 and root 4 is 4, which is a rational number. Finally, the division of root 3 and root 3 is 1, which is also a rational number. From the above four examples, we conclude that the sum, difference, quotients and products of irrational numbers need not be irrational numbers. Thus, the irrational numbers are not closer to fundamental operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Let us list out some types of properties which are useful in various ways. If A and B are positive real numbers, then root AB is equal to root A into root B. Root A by B is equal to root A by root B, where B not equal to 0. Root A plus root B into root A minus root B is equal to A minus B. A plus root B into A minus root B is equal to A square minus B. Root A plus root B into root C plus root D equal to root AC plus root AD plus root B, C plus root BD. Root A plus root B whole square is equal to A plus 2 root AB plus B. Let us solve some example problems using the properties of irrational numbers. Evaluate 5 plus root 3 into 5 minus root 3. Solution given. As it is of the form a plus root b into a minus root b, it can be written as a square minus b. By further solving, we get as 5 square minus root 3 whole square that is equal to 25 minus 3 which in turn equal to 22. Note, if a is rational and b is irrational number, then a plus b, a minus b, a into b and a by b, where b not equal to 0 are irrational numbers. Evaluate root 3 plus root 4 whole square. Solution Given as it is of the form root a plus root b whole square which is equal to a plus 2 root ab plus b. By further solving we get root 3 whole square plus 2 into root 3 into root 4 plus root 4 whole square which is equal to 3 plus 2 root 12 plus 4 in turn equal to 7 plus 2 root 12. Subtract 2 root 4 plus 3 root 5 from 6 root 5 plus 5 root 4. Solution. When we subtract 2 root 4 plus 3 root 5 from 6 root 5 plus 5 root 4. By further solving, we get 3 root 5 plus 3 root 4. Rationalizing the denominator. We already learned that we cannot locate irrational numbers on a number line directly. To locate the irrational numbers on a number line, we need to find the value of the given irrational number. Suppose, consider the irrational number 1 by root 5. To locate it on a number line, initially, we need to find the value of it. In order to find the value of 1 by root 5, we cannot divide the value of root 5 that is 2.236 with 1. It is not easy to find the value of 1 by root 5. In such cases, change the denominator into a rational form. Here, to rationalize 1 by root 5, multiply numerator and denominator with root 5 as shown on the screen. We obtain it as one-fifth of root 5. So, 
Now we can plot root 5 by 5 on a number line. Thus root 5 is the rationalizing factor of root 5. Similarly, the product of root 5 and root 5 is 5. Here root 5 and root 5 are rationalizing factors of each other. Note, if the product of two irrational numbers is a rational number, then each of the two numbers are rationalizing factors of each other. Rationalizing factor of a given irrational number is not unique. Let us solve some example problems on rationalizing the denominator. Evaluate 3 by root 5 minus 2. Solution. Given expression is 3 by root 5 minus 2. Multiplying numerator and denominator with root 5 plus 2. We get as shown. Multiplying it further, we get as 3 into root 5 plus 2 by root 5 minus 2 into root 5 plus 2. Since here, the denominator is in the form of a minus b into a plus b, we can write it as a square minus b square. Thus, it is expressed as 3 root 5 plus 6 by root 5 square minus 2 square. By further solving, we get as 3 root 5 plus 6. Evaluate 8 plus root 2 by 2 minus root 2. Solution. For the given expression, multiplying numerator and denominator with 2 plus root 2, we get as follows. Let us discuss about loss of exponents for real numbers. The loss of exponents are product rule. Product rule is defined as a power m into a power n equal to a power m plus n. Power of a power, power of a power rule is defined as a power m whole power n is equal to a power mn. Power of a quotient, power of a quotient is defined as a power m by a power n equal to a power m minus n. Power of a product, Power of a product is defined as a power m into b power m equal to a b whole power m. Zero exponent. Zero exponent is defined as a power zero equal to one, where a is not equal to zero. Negative exponent. It is defined as one by a power m equal to a power minus m. Click each tab to know more. For example, let us consider 5 power 6 into 5 power minus 6. Using loss of exponent, we can write it as 5 power 6 plus minus 6, which is equal to 5 power 0, in turn equal to 1. For example, let us consider 6 power 3 whole power minus 1, which is equal to 6 power minus 3. It can be written as 1 by 6 power 3, which is further equal to 1 by 216. For example, let us consider 10 power minus 6 by 10 power 3, which is equal to 10 power minus 6 minus 3, in turn equal to 10 power minus 9. For example, let us consider 5 power 2 into 10 power 2. As powers are same, it can be written as 5 into 10 power 2 that is equal to 50 power 2. For example, 3 power 0 is equal to 1. For example, let us consider 1 by 2 power 3, which is equal to 2 power minus 3.
Knowledge Check Attempt the following questions to check your understanding. Let us solve few example problems on loss of exponents. If 4 square equal to 16, then prove that square root 16 which is equal to 4. Solution Given that 4 square equal to 16. By further solving, we get as shown on screen. If 11 square equal to 121, then prove that square root 121 equal to 11. Solution Given that 11 square equal to 121, by further solving, we get as shown on screen. Note If a power m is equal to b, then mth root b is a. mth root of b is a mth root b is equal to b power 1 by m which is equal to a power m whole power 1 by m that is equal to a. So, assume m be a positive integer where a greater than 0 be a real number. If b power m is equal to a for some positive real number b then mth root of a is b which can be written as mth root a equal to b. Try to solve the problems in the practice zone on your own. You can click solution for your reference. Test your understanding of the chapter by taking the mock unit test. 